today we've got a little bit of testing to do. We've got a motherboard here, test motherboard. I got a lot of RAM to test and I've got some RAM that I got back from a customer that just, they didn't want this. They wanted a more upgraded system. So we have this to test. We did take that back. We're gonna double check and see if it worked. And we're gonna test this RAM, but I'm gonna to have to create a flash drive to do a mem test run. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create the flash drive first. So on the main computer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in that flash drive. We're gonna go and go to memtest 86com we're gonna download the current free one. We're gonna open up that file. We're gonna extract that here. Okay, it's extracting to this folder. Just be one second. There it goes. And once that's done, you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in that USB flash drive. You're going to then use image USB and it's gonna create that USB drive for you. It's gonna ask for permission. The only drive I plugged in is the one that we're gonna be using, which is the Kingston. But if you have multiple drives, make sure you're selecting the right drive that you wanna use. It will also erase this entire drive. So you wanna check off a drive that you're not gonna be worried about losing anything on it. So we're gonna leave all the rest of the settings normal and you're gonna hit right. And you're gonna say, yes, it's going to erase that entire drive. That is correct, say yes. It will give you one more warning that it will erase everything that is on the drive. So at this point, we're ready to go. We're just gonna hit yes. It's gonna go through its writing process, let it go. Okay, once the image is complete, you hit okay. You're gonna close this, you're gonna close everything else. And you're going to now take that flash drive and unplug it and you're gonna go over to the system that you're actually gonna be testing the RAM on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the motherboard that we're gonna use. This is the flash drive I have. I'm just gonna put that off to the side for now. We're going to use the power supply as well as this motherboard. And the other shield, which we're not gonna need because we're not putting this in the case right now. We are gonna put the RAM in really quickly. So we're gonna take the RAM out that we're gonna test. Populate the RAM into the RAM sockets. <laughs> of course, this is in the way. Typical. Um, going to need a screwdriver. We're going to undo that and flip it around. We're going to unplug that. We're going to unscrew the CPU fan. It's really tight. All right. Once that's undone, I'm just going to flip it over. This is looking pretty bad. That paste is pretty gnarly. So we're gonna repaste this really quickly. Let's just do that and fix this. Okay, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need a pair of gloves. You're gonna need some paper towels. So I'm gonna put some gloves on just so I don't make a mess. Just some plastic latex gloves. Well, these are vinyl gloves. These aren't latex, but same difference. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol. My version I'm using is 99%. You're gonna do is you're gonna just take this. You're gonna take a little bit of the alcohol on it. So leave that, drench it in a little. And then you're going to take this and rub it down the processor to get off all of the thermal paste. Get as much thermal paste off as you can. You may have to use different sides just to get rid of it all. That's okay. Use up your paper towel. You might have to fold that a little bit here. Different ways to get it to clean. You want to also clean off the fan. This fan is very dirty. And it's got new paste, which is weird. But it's got really a lot of dirt or something that looks like it was burnt. Could be just dirt. Make sure the middle is clean. The outside here, it just looks a little bit discolored. Maybe there was a little bit of extra heat or something. Let's so clean up my best I can here. Let's make sure the fan also works. Once that's done, we're gonna throw out this. Oh, wait a minute, you know what? I didn't clean this off as much as I thought. Let's get this off. Yeah, okay, all clean. 
So at this point, we're gonna put some thermal paste back. You can use any type of thermal paste you want. That basically is for CPUs. I'm using not two as brands. You could use Corsair as well or any other brand. Hopefully we have enough in here to paste this. If we don't, we'll have to find another bottle. Yeah, we got enough. You can do different patterns if you want. I, I just put a little dot in the middle. It should be just enough. That's just enough to cover it. You need a dot in the middle. This is a small processor, it should be fine. Larger processors like your Epic, I think it's Epic processors as well as the Threadripper processor, you'll need a little bit more thermal paste than that. But for us, that's all you really need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the little notch here for the AMD away from the actual RAM sockets. going to line it back up, put it back in place. You're gonna screw down in a diagonal pattern. So you're gonna take the first screw off to the side and then you're gonna to get to the other side. Do not go all the way down. Do not bottom it out. You'll bottom them out later. So just get it tight, get them on there all first. And then now you can screw it down the rest of the way. Now you'll hear my screwdriver hearing it click back. That means that it is set down. It's not too, too, too tight. It's set down to enough that it's just enough to push back on it. You're gonna connect the CPU fan back into the plug for the header. And now we're gonna install some RAM. I can take these off at this point. So 16 gigs of RAM we're testing. Right, we're gonna line this up into the notches. We're gonna slide it in. Uh, hopefully Brian would actually learn and actually put it the right way. You click it in place, same thing for the other one. It's notched out, so there's a little notch here that you can see is what is going to line up with the motherboard down below. So what you wanna do is make sure that notch is going the correct direction. Plug it into its socket. If I can do that, there we go. Click it in. Now what we're gonna do is instead of putting it into a case, I'm not gonna put it into a case because I'm only testing stuff. So we're going to simply take the power, plug it straight in to the motherboard on this side, the 24 pin and the eight, eight pin for the motherboard. Just click it in. Um, for the motherboard, just make sure you get the right eight pin connector. One that says CPU on it. This one happens to say CPU. Just to give you an example, it says CPU there. So then we're going to plug that directly into this eight port over here. I'm gonna combine these back together. CPU connected. It's a little bit messy around here, but that's all you need from the power supply, except for power itself, but we're gonna put this wire over that way just to kind of clear everything. We're not worried about thermals right now, we're just worried about testing the RAM. We are going to put the USB flash drive, plug that in, screwdriver out of the way. We're gonna plug in the keyboard. We're only gonna need a keyboard for this. We really shouldn't require a mouse into one of the USB sockets. a graphic card installation on an open bench you're better off bringing the board up a little bit so you have enough room to put the graphic card in and not cause it to be in the way should snap right in place we're going to unplug this and plug it directly into the graphic card Hopefully this graphic card works. Oh, it needs power also. So, yeah, there's power. Okay. This one says PCIe on it, which is correct, and it's only a six pin. This is a just a lower powered graphic card, hopefully. All right. Now we're ready. Uh, we should be able to turn this back on. 
push this back a little bit. And uh, let me see if I can lean over and turn that power if I can get at it. Let's short it, yep. Okay. All right, so let's see if we get video now. Get to the BIOS, here we go. I'm hitting the delete key to get to the BIOS. And I'm checking first to see uh, if XMP is on uh, for the memory. And let's do that. Um, did I pass it? Advanced memory settings. Okay, XMP is currently off, which is no good. So we're gonna turn that on so we can test it with the full speed of the RAM. So we're gonna choose profile one. That is the correct speed, that is it. So it's at DDR4 3000. If anything else, we should just be able to go over to boot. We're going to boot into the Kingston Traveler, that's fine. That is the flash drive that I have plugged in. We're gonna save settings and exit. And we're gonna boot off that flash drive. Now, when we boot off the flash drive, it should automatically go into memtest. You'll see that this is the normal screen for memory test. If it's booting like this, then you know it's gonna jump into memtest in a minute. Okay, if you just let it go, it'll count down and do its normal thing. We don't wanna do any configuration. We're just gonna let it go. It says clock does say 3194, which is interesting. It should be 3000. Maybe it's overclocking by a little bit. We'll let it run uh, and we'll see if it uh, passes or fails. It's gotta run four passes, so this is gonna take a while. Once we are completing this test, we will also run on another set of memory. I'm gonna leave this recording for a little bit so that you guys can see what's going on, but honestly, it kind of goes through its regular passes. You'll see it says pass is 41% so far. We test at 42 or 45%. This is gonna take a while. Test five says moving inversions and random pattern. It's gonna go through a bunch of different tests there. Now, if there's a bad memory, it'll usually fail within the first two passes, but I've also seen something fail within the third pass. So I like to let it go all the way through all four passes to be sure that you've got perfectly good working memory. This is the pass screen for memory test. Basically the memory has passed, so it's all good to go. So at this point, uh, we're ready to test the next set of memory. We would just do the same process. We shut the machine off at the power supply and then reconnect two more memory sticks. And once we test those, it will be also going through pass or fail. If they fail, obviously you would send them back to your RAM manufacturer. Uh, Corsair has lifetime memory as well as a lot of other companies like Crucial and stuff like that have lifetime warranty. So if there is something wrong where it doesn't pass the memory test, you can send it back for uh, repair. All right, that's it for this one. Stay subscribed and we'll see you then.